Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this main house production. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories to entertain you, and of course, to entertain ourselves. And we use role playing games to keep those stories going places even we can't see coming. Because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. This episode is part of our current main house production, Vigil Chief Exec. To tell this story, we're playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat. So, please take your seats in the main house. Tonight's production is about to begin. Vigil, a Merely Role Player's main house production. Chief Exec, Act 4 of 5. I'm Vicky and I play Renko the Flake. Renko is a Doom agent on furlough who was assigned to Sheridan and is now convinced something significant is happening in town. Hi, I'm Marta and I play Harper the Searcher. Harper came to England from the United States to escape the shadow world that keeps trying to pull her in. But in spite of her best efforts, weird things just won't leave her alone here either. I'm Josh, and I play Ginny Greenteeth, the Spell Slinger. In the Dark Ages, soothsayer Ginny was chased from her village under suspicion of witchcraft. Now, many centuries later, she is the proud owner of a local tourist attraction and gift shop in Sheridan. I'm Nat and I play Gwynedd the Divine. Gwyn was once a shield maiden of the triple goddess the Morrigan. After interfering with one of her schemes by rescuing a mortal man, the Morrigan banished Gwyn to live life as a duck in what became Sheridan's duck pond. Now released from her curse thousands of years later, Gwyn is trying to forge a new life as part of the local National Trust team is finding it difficult to stay under the radar. A second sun blooms in the sky. Better the devil you know. Max Dashwood was the thing in the sky. The mortal wizard, Jackie Danbrook, dies this week (gasps) at your hand. The combined aspects of Morrigan together would be a good leader. I have to wonder where the other aspects are. Hanging from the branches are two bird cages, each containing a raven. I don't know if she would, but as Gwyn approaches, she'll raise a hand for Keredwen to see if she would fly down. She does. Yeah, we give her a little scritch mm-hmm. on the snoot. Her little birdie head like leans into your hand. She jerks her head and her beak towards the tree and the cages. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello. They were really close. Yeah, I know. I was living in that tree for a while and I moved out, (laughs) probably just as she imprisoned them here. I'm very frustrated. (laughs) I bet. (laughs) Both ravens core. (laughs) Like, if I'd I'd not moved to the abbey, if I'd I'd not been, if I'd not allowed myself to once again get mopey and hung up on a human, I would have noticed this. Feelings, you know, they suck. (laughs) Just from looking at it, do I get a sense that uh, just giving the cages a good old whack with some fiery holy magic would do the trick, or do I have to do some magic magic rather than you? Can, you, you can certainly give them a good whack with the staff and see if that does anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, are, you know, they are partially made from some of the bars are just made from ice, and it's probably magical ice, and you know it's tied to this tree in yeah, the winter king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the move that I took 
earlier Mm -hmm. as part of my levelling up was from the Chosen playbook. Uh, I chose the Devastating tag. Christ alive. When I inflict harm, I may inflict plus one harm. Great. Lovely. You can tell which of these ravens is which. Mm. Is there one that you go for first? I'm just going to go... I think I'm going to start with... uh, The idea is to go for both, but we'll probably go for Hearth Mother because that Mm. might release something in Caridwen as well. So you grab a branch. Grab a branch. The branch twists and becomes a quarterstaff and bursts into holy flame. Yeah. I think she's going to fly up behind both cages and uh, the the quarterstaff is spun around her head and comes crashing through from behind both of them, but with the hearth mothers first and then uh, forest hag. I guess I'll just stand underneath, like with Harper just stands underneath with her arms outstretched in case they just like drop. And like, I guess I'll grab them. <laughs> we'll catch the bird. Catch them just so the bird doesn't like literally smush onto the floor inside the cage. But I think as she's doing it, she is sort of trying to hold on to the corresponding aspects within herself mm. of the to protect and care and the the humans doing all right actually <laughs> kind of sides of things. Both cages come to pieces beneath the, the holy quarter staff. And from the the flying molten iron and, and smashed ice and wood, splinters, fire, debris, out of that fly the two ravens. And with Harper standing mm. there with ow, her arms ow, out, ow, ow. one alights on each of your arms. <laughs> oh, great. So goth. <laughs> so goth. And the forest hag speaks. Mm. We like this one, Gwyneth. Yeah, she goes, help me. <laughs> She's got something about her. I don't know what it is, though. It's quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> she knows the shadowed places. She rejects them for now, but they are in her. <laughs> Can I hear this? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, these are full-on talking birds. <laughs> yeah, just looking at her like, this more normal thing in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Gwyneth, for freeing us. We'll just sort of give a little nod and a bow. It is a dark time for Morrigan. That it is. You can say that again. Our warlike sister is in ascendant, more powerful than she has ever been, drawing on both of our power. And yet, Gwyneth, you defy her. You come here and you free us from her. What would you, Gwyneth? Well, firstly, I'd like to clarify. I don't see it as defying her per se. Yeah. It's just trying to Wait, bring... Just, just go with it. Just come well, on. I, I, tick-tock, um, tick-tock. Okay. Well, I... Bran and I were talking. We, This town needs someone who cares about the forest and the magic inherent in it here, who can see above the, the sort of the, the power-hungry, the, the grabbing that all this Sorcerer's Guild are doing, and it cares more about the place and the people in it, and... That is who we were. I think, combined, you might actually do a good job. You are our daughter, Gwyneth. We are with you. Always. (laughs) But... (laughs) It will require dark things of you, Gwyneth. That has already been asked. (laughs) Big figures. Our sister is war. She is battle. She is the leader in conflict with enemy. She cannot be defeated by nice words and firelight, Gwyneth. She can be defeated only in battle. And you think that I would have the power to take on a third of you? Can you roll investigate a mystery for me? I mean, can I? <laughs> can I? <laughs> can I resist? Oh, oh yeah. you can. With a ten, yes I can. Hey. Hey. Welcome Finally. to the party. <laughs> Finally succeeded at something. What can hurt it? <laughs> Our sister's strength, Gwyneth, is also her weakness. She is a leader of war. She leads armies in battle. She does not duel. One on one, she must fight fair. This is true. I mean, again, historically, I've usually been part of a a group rather than fighting one on one as well, but uh, 
No, I, 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 I can, I can, I can try. Friends, Gwyneth, are not an army. They can be. If you see them as such, do you, Gwyneth? I mean, they're not necessarily all warriors in the <laughs> classical sense, but, you know, they all have their part to play. As you, I'm sure, would say. If you think this is the way, then I, I can try, but I, any advice you have <laughs> would be greatly appreciated. This is the way, Gwyneth. This is the only way. After this, we cannot take her back. We would not. But Morrigan is three because Morrigan is change. Morrigan is flux. Those three do not have to remain the same three forever. This is true. This world has far less need for traditional warriors. It's had far too many of those, as far as I've seen from... The, you know, there's a thing called television. <laughs> uh, my arms are burning here. So <laughs> get, get, get on with it. Great. I like Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> that, that surprises me. It's not better you, but the okay. The twisted things they make these mortals do for power. Uh, sure, actually, I can see that angle. <laughs> Have you, have you tried watching any David Attenborough? <laughs> <laughs> you are right, Gwyneth. There is, there is room for different kinds of leadership and diff- even different kinds of leadership in battle. But our sister has committed too far to the path that she is on. She has lost her ability to change. This is the only form of leadership she is capable of now. The only path is for her to overtake us entirely or to be removed. Then I suppose that's what we ought to try. We will be with you. <laughs> so comforting. <laughs> also, maybe rethink this whole being divided into aspects situation. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, it doesn't work super well, in my experience. You would talk to us, to Morgan, uh, about being divided. <laughs> being with no shadow. I mean... You really have not learned how to just not talk back to divine beings, have you? Look, I'm an atheist. Technically speaking, I don't even believe they exist. So it's all very grey. Right there on your arms. <laughs> you know, talking you, birds. You, girl, you have made yourself a being of duality, a being of two things. Three is much more stable. It is the magic number, as they say. This is true. How is that working out for you <laughs> right now? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's just get on with it. Our sister has picked her enemy. She has directed you in that direction. Yes. You have discovered the enemy behind that enemy, I believe. And our sister can be turned against that. And while consumed with that battle, may be vulnerable. That sounds like a a solid plan. We need to keep him distracted anyway. All right. Thank you. Stay safe. We are with you, Gwyneth. Well, then I cannot promise you are safe. (laughs) 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 I have made some terrible decisions. (laughs) I am not historically good at protecting people. (laughs) Do you guys want a snack? (laughs) Have you tried fudge? I mean, they've been in a cage for a minute. You're hungry. I think I have some nuts somewhere. Your king. No. I'm going to try and talk to Jackie. Great. Uh, what do you think Jackie Danbrook's office is like? If this woman was a phrase, she would be, oh, just let me handle it. Yes. I wonder if it's just like, there's just so much stuff, mm-hmm. like paperwork, folders, files, like there's 150 things going on at the same time. She's been the incumbent yeah. mayor in Sheridan for a minute. Yeah, like, like she's just drowning in paperwork. So yes, you enter her office and she she doesn't notice and you can't see her when yeah. you first come in. There is like a labyrinth of ring binders that you have to navigate. But you find her behind her desk. She's not old, but she's sort of edging into middle age, Mm -hmm. dyes her hair to keep herself sort of campaign ready. She wears glasses with a a gold glasses chain, and she's in the middle of some paperwork when you arrive. Hi, Jackie? Uh, I'm sorry, come back later. I I can see you're really, really busy, but I do need to talk to you about the election. (sighs) Are you from from Nicholson? Does she know me? 
having worked at town council? Because you weren't like actually genuinely yeah. a member of the of the staff here, I, th- I think, and I think it's been a few years. Yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, enough yeah. years yeah. that she'll have, if she ever recognised you, she's forgotten. Yeah. You. Okay, that's good. That's good. So let's use that to our advantage. Uh, yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, I think I've got the the memos for the next uh section, the next stage here somewhere, and the I need uh Max to look over the notes for the debate as well and make sure I'm getting all the right bits. So if I could just uh, dig these out and I will pass them on and you can take on that. That would be great. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I was actually coming with a specific message from Max that he didn't want to send my email if you get catch my drift. Oh, suddenly her attention is not on the paperwork, it's on you. And it was just um, little bits and pieces related to the planned ascension that's due to happen around the time of the election. (laughs) There's definitely nobody else in here, is there? No, 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 I I checked. All right, yes, okay, well, what? what? Well, I have to be clear, I... I feel like I've been given quite a lot of information, new information that I hadn't had before. And I just need to check, like, as I said, like, there's no one around here, but like, we're okay to talk candidly about this situation. Yes, as long as you shut the door behind you. Yeah, I'm just, (laughs) Jackie, let me be straight with you here. And I'm, I don't know if I'm going to have to, <laughs> if I should roll before or after <laughs> I say what I'm going to say. Yeah, roll for that now. Roll plus charm. We'll see how that goes. So charming. It's Ooh. a seven, eight, nine. Okay. The thing is, Jackie, I want to be straight with you here. Like, I've, I've been become privy to some information from Max mm-hmm. that I hadn't appreciated that um, his plan is for all of us to be essentially sacrificed as a result of this planned ascension. And, you know, I'm very, I'm feeling very concerned about that in a way I wasn't before. And I thought you as the mayoral candidate ought to know that the bargain that I feel like we've all entered into with Max here is maybe not quite as um, beneficial to us as he made it seem. Yes, no, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't the agreed upon deal at all. We're supposed to go with him through the moon door and be, and be safe from what's to come next. No, sacrifice has never been on the... He's, there's no sacrifice required. It's all just based on the... Uh, the adulation of the electorate uh, to me, which then flows to him, and the ownership of powerful places and areas and companies. No, nothing so barbaric as actual sacrifice is necessary. Uh, yeah, I think he may have misrepresented the facts to you a little bit. As the linchpin in particular, I think this isn't going to end well for you. This is... She like <laughs> looks at her calendar. She looks at her watch. She looks at checks, double checks it with a clock on the wall. She looks. Her, her whole demeanor is of like, I just do not have time in my schedule to deal with this today. But come with me, and we're going to have, we're taking this to Max right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, why don't we just call him? You're a very busy person. Like, let's get him on the phone right now. You're right. We'll put him on speaker and. Uh, We'll clear the air and clear all of this up. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you've got the wrong end of the stick. Is what's happening? Well, let's here. hope I'm right. But uh, if I'm wrong, speaking to him directly is gonna, you know, I guess clear a lot up. <laughs> she dials and he lets it ring for some time. Of course, he does. <laughs> she is not an urgent priority for him. It wouldn't appear. Hmm. I'm just saying that, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You exchange some glances. She's trying to communicate the. No, this is this is very normal. He's a very busy man, mm, but mm, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. Renko yeah. knows that this is a lie she's telling herself. Yes, yes. Eventually, he picks up. Dashwood, speak. Uh, Max. Uh, yes, it's Jackie. Uh, I've got one of your uh, Nicholson Pryor people here. Um, who claims that uh, there's been a bit of a miscommunication about the exact terms of the ascension, the uh, the power requirements, etc., uh, etc., cetera, et cetera, and uh, just wanted to clear the air about the the exactitude of um, power versus sacrifice versus ownership, uh, uh, all of all of these sorts. Of, uh, just clarify, uh, uh, Mr. Dashwood. If I could just cut in for a second. You're not one of mine. No, that is true. Actually, uh, Jackie, I have been leading you on, I'm afraid, slightly. I really just wanted to get you and Mr. Dashwood on the phone at the same time. I actually have some information about your opponent in the mayoral election. I know it's very important to you that you win. So I thought you would like to know that she wants to meet for a conversation in, uh, I know it's going to seem very weird, but in the forest 
to uh, talk about um, withdrawing from the race? Not weird at all. Expected, in fact. I rather expect some form of uh, trap here, but uh, just so that you're aware, I can survive whatever you're going to spring. Name the place. Well, I think uh, it will be well known to you. Um, It's actually the Grove of Oddities. There's a kind of small gift shop there. I think she's just keen for some uh, neutral turf. (laughs) Funny definition of neutral. Yes, I very much smell a rat, but I'm inclined to expedite proceedings. And all parties gathered seems to be the uh, efficient way of doing so. Okay, uh, she will see you there. I look forward to it. Yeah, I'll just hang up for Jackie and be like, I'm sorry I had to drag you into this, but some stuff is going down and you better just be anywhere anywhere else, really, would be my advice. Our four hunters gather at the Grove of Oddities. Whereabouts among the gift shop and the stone circle and the cave of fireflies do you all gather for this calm moment before the storm. Should we gather around the stone circle? Yeah. Yeah. It feels quite sort of ritualistic, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, portentous, yeah. yeah. Mm. The stone circle is kind of devoid of magical activity. It's aware. It's like it's like it's wilted slightly. The ivy has sort of fallen off and rotted away. It's just a sad place. Yeah, there are those sort of lighter coloured stone traceries on it where the ivy used to hang mm. that has now crumbled away. Ginny, I don't suppose you've got any magics within you that could help me be a bit tougher? That is a very good question, my darling. What I can do is I can offer you a blessing. That might help. (laughs) Because, of course, I already know how this ends. I've seen the future. Of course you do. I know what's written in, in my letter. I know exactly how this fight will end. And so what I can do is offer you some of that, some of that knowledge going forward. If you'd be willing to take a blessing from a crazy old hippie such as myself. I mean, I'd always be willing to take a blessing from you, Ginny. I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to stop the monogam ripping me apart, but it might help somewhat. So, oh, I know um, what's going to happen. <laughs> yes, it's very infuriating <laughs> no. of you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to take a step forward and just uh, place my hand on Gwyn's shoulder. And just close my eyes and sort of take my hand to my heart like that. And you just feel this wave of warm sort of healing magical druidic energy mm-hmm. sort of begin to course through your body you mm-hmm. your lungs are filled with the, the smell of uh, of a fresh dew on a spring and you hear birds <laughs> tweeting <laughs> I mean we rooms. are in the forest <laughs> we are in the forest <laughs> after all uh, t- uh, yep I use up my final um, fortunes token to uh, take a plus one forward or give plus one forward to another hunter and I I I truly believe that the magic around this place is, yes, of course, it was, it's was. it been here for a long time, but I think it's connected to you. And even if you lose the, whatever, physical shop that is here, it doesn't matter because you will still have your power. And if all he's after is the bricks and mortar of it, then, you know, it. if that's what it's going to take to get rid of his power... I I know you can rebuild. It's nothing to do with the physical construction. Exactly. It's a creaking old building. It's got many memories, of course, happy memories, bringing Cameron on board and all the long, infuriating days we spent in that gift shop. Mm -hmm. But it's, I don't know, when you've lived for 700 years, you get a bit of perspective on on things. You know, it's only been around for a mere blink of an eye. So as long as his power does, as long as he does not leech the power from me, as long as he does not grow stronger through my inaction, then I will be perfectly happy. We're still talking about Max and not Cameron, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> I, I think Cameron might be leeching off me for a lot longer. He doesn't, doesn't seem to have many prospects going forward. <laughs> but um, I'm glad he's got you watching out for him. Hmm. Have you spoken to him recently, just out of interest? No, have you looked in your letter, Ginny? No, 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 listen, no, listen, uh, I, I, I don't mean Harper, to meddle. Did you pass, Harper, there's a letter for you. Oh, is, uh, is From there? Percy. I yes. did not get this letter. Oh, it's I a, also don't know, do I know who Cameron I, is? I don't know, maybe <laughs> I do. Oh, there it is. Oh, Grant. I forgot to give it to you earlier. That's all right. Apologies. Renko. 
Yeah. I know that we often clash and we're two big personalities in this small village. Um, but I just want to thank you for getting me out of Max Dashwood's office. No, any time. Any time. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to do what, we, what needs to be done mm-hmm. and I'm here to do it again. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. You, you can show emotion, you know. That doesn't make you weak. It's um, I just feel that you've always got a wall up, don't you? Uh, well, you know, it's just uh, mm. the way I've, I, I think I've always been. But, you know, just trying to trying to just keep it professional as much as possible. Mm. If this goes the way that we are hoping it goes, I think after this, another big party at Briar's Tree. Mm. Really let yourself go this time. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll I'll do my best. Mm, you must try the punch. Try a mushroom or two. <laughs> Let your hair down and dance. You've really not lived until you've tried a fey orgy. No, oh, the, the orgies there are just magnificent. I, uh, I think I'll be all right at home with a, a cocoa and a true crime drama. We can bring Mike if you like. Yeah, I, th- I Mick. think... Mick. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting. You've seen another <laughs> phone now. <laughs> oh, wait. wait. Yeah. No, Mick the go. Builder? Yes. We don't have to go into this that. Is now. We're not. Mm. We're not going oh, into that. Oh yes, the, the, oh. the two, the no, two no, of them, no, Ren- Renko no, and Mickey, have been oh, sort of uh, seeing each other. We on are the just, side. Friends. Mm. just friends. We're just mm. friends. And oh, that's, I know what that's happens. Sure. Not what we're here to talk about right now. I've seen right what now, happens. we've got some important preparations to make. And Ginny, is there anything that else that we need to be doing to get you prepared for whatever's about to come? Mm. I think so. I think what I need. Focus on the task at hand. Okay. I think what I need <laughs> from you all is to. Um, Tell me about your feelings towards the men in your life. So, you, so Gwyn, you tell me about Cameron and uh, Renko. You speak out I'm, I'm of a clear, <laughs> no! out of a clear blue sky. Oh, lightning God. strikes in the centre of the stone circle. Never been so pleased to see Max Dashwood in my life. <laughs> Scoring a Lundor Group logo oh, into the prick. grass <laughs> in the centre of the circle. So tacky. So tacky. Oh God! What in it? the centre of which stands Max? Dashwood. He's changed. He's in a he's in a he different, uh, equally stylish and expensive and understated uh, three piece suit, with a little Lundor Group logo pin on the lapel. I'll take a day off. Look, I'm yeah, just saying. By all means. I have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's as, a nice thing to say to your grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. <laughs> you true, wanted to yeah. know. <laughs> and as if he's just picking up a conversation that he was just in the middle of, he says. Ginny, uh, one last offer, really, just to uh, try to resolve all of this. I'll listen. Uh, come with us. I know you're not a, a, an official member of the uh, English Sorcery Guild, but you are a, somewhat of an institution in this, uh, in this country, uh, have been for some time, and much as you and I are butting heads just at the moment, I think actually our goals are uh, rather aligned and... If you were to stop your meddling and allow me to complete my project, you could come with us and avoid everything that's going to come after. Hmm. Stop meddling, you say. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's the trigger word right there. You're in for yeah, it now, that's word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're offering me a chance to abandon my town, my friends, everything I know here to come and join you and your corporate lackeys? Ginny, you're a wise woman. You know you know which way the wind is blowing. And he says that with a knowing look, clearly mm-hmm. aware that you were a breeze in a past life. You know which way the wind is blowing. You must know you are very close to him, of course. Uh, you must know that this realm is, is... There's not much road left in it. So... Am I asking you to abandon your friends and your community? No, I'm asking you to abandon what will shortly be a ruin. Mm. Sheridan's been called plenty of things in its time. A ruin, a ghost town, a tourist trap. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but we've always come back stronger. We ride out the storm, Max, and we come back stronger because of who we are, because of who we are as a community. We foiled the plan with the bar guest and we brought the village together. But there's perhaps one thing you could do to convince me to join your side, if you're interested in hearing from me. Anything that makes the project more efficient, I'm open to suggestions. I want you to get down on your knees. I want you to muddy that suit of yours and beg me. 
beg me to join your side. Were you willing to do that? He locks eyes with you for a long second. Before he sighs and your fire, the fire that he sees in your eyes, rattles him. Renko specifically knows that when he breaks eye contact and gives a little sigh like he's just bored of this conversation, Renko knows Mm -hmm. that sigh is a lie and he is scared. Mm -hmm. Ah, this conversation is going nowhere. And he points at you, Ginny, and shoots a bolt of lightning at you. Bradman! Straight into it. it. As before... (sighs) A force uh, wall appears in front of her in an attempt to divert the missile that's been fired at me. All right, roll, pl- to, roll plus weird okay. to kick some ass. Off we go, 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 off we go, go, everybody. Ooh, Ooh. Nine oh, plus three is twelve oh. total. <laughs> okay, so, so both hands, in, both hands into the component pouches mm-hmm. and just thrown in an in an arc along the ground uh, mm-hmm. as this <laughs> this wall of a uh, force storm energy. <laughs> Yeah, is there protecting me? And once again, uh, the uh, your wind wall has two armor, so that goes up in between you and him. Mm-hmm. Dissipates the lightning bolt once again mm-hmm. harmlessly. And what extra effects would you like for rolling real well on kicks and ass moves? Oh, that's a really good point. Mm. I very rarely roll really well. Do, 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 do. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to take a plus one forward, please. Great. I, I, I gain the advantage. A glint, a glint in my eye as I <laughs> smile at him. <laughs> what was the pity? You can see uh, part of how you're gaining the advantage here is you can see he thought he'd adapted his magic. He, he's met this wind wall before. He thought he was shooting something at you that was going to get through this. Mm-hmm. But you're too strong for mm-hmm. him. Bran, when the, uh, arrives in the form of a crow... Mm-hmm swooping down out of the setting sun. We found the true source of Jackie's power. If we were to take him out, it'll stop her completely. She transforms, lands on one knee in the stone circle as a fully armoured shield maiden. No wings. Draws her sword from her back. Again, it glows but does not flame. And raises the sword high into the sky. Looks up and utters from her human throat the core of a crow as she calls mm-hmm. her mistress. Amazing. Uh, so I reach into the component pouch and fling some moss and dirt and shit at him. Specifically shit. It's dumb. Excrement. Yeah, it, it's dumb, which I throw at him, which spatters on his suit. Uh, and I'd like to try and... Uh, like throwing it through the wind wall mm-hmm. and like the wind scatters oh, it at oh, him like a, like a shotgun. Oh, oh, yeah, the shit has like literally hit the fan. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Uh, and I'd like to try and trap a specific person in place. Ooh. So what I'm going to try and do, I've done this before, is a load of vines to erupt mm. from the ground and wrap around his neck and his arms and sort of hold him in place. Great, this is a use magic, so roll plus weird. Please. Okay, rolling plus three. There we are. Oh, wow. Oh my Bloody gosh. Hell. Honestly, but do we, do we change it? Go? <laughs> should we just, no. we just go? It's the, we changed the dice, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It uh, worked. 13 total. From behind him, these huge sort of tendrils, uh, snake-like, burst out of the ground. Three in total. One wrapped from behind, sort of wraps around his neck. The other two grab his arms. And the strength of the roll that I've done pulls him down to his knees, as I originally asked him to do. And he's now in this sort of locked position where he cannot currently move. He's trapped. A second small black bird swoops down out of the setting sun transforms in a burst of feathers, landing on both feet gracefully. Not Boudicca Morgan, mayoral candidate, Mm -hmm. but the war aspect of Morrigan. Mm -hmm. Astride a black horse. Classic. Nice. Helmed, her hair spraying out behind the the black helmet, carrying a flaming spear under one arm. The horse trots and canters in place as she looks down from her high position at the kneeling Max Dashwood. She looks from him to you, Gwyneth. This is your answer, is it, Gwyneth? This is how you fulfilled the duty I gave you. This is an answer. I can still carry it out if you like, but I figured 
why bother with a small fry when we can take it straight to the top? And I thought you might take great pleasure in thwarting someone with a bit more bite. General versus general. This is pleasing. She turns and the horse slowly, confidently begins to trot forward as she levels the spear, pointing it straight at Max. He's on his knees, being bent backwards by the vines, and he's laughing. And from his open laughing mouth, silver light begins to stream as he, going with the vines, bends backwards even further, bending backwards to the point that would break a normal human's back, almost bending into the shape of a wheel on the ground. He's doing some Cirque du Soleil shit. (laughs) And it's it's very creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this isn't hot anymore? (laughs) I mean... Silver light pours from his mouth and eyes... And from the small diamonds on his tie, his tie pin, the buttons of his waistcoat, silver light bursts from them all as the human form of Max Dashwood blazes with silver light and becomes instead a spinning silver wheel that shreds the vines restraining him, rises into the air. The silver wheel grows blazing white eyes at intervals all around it, and as it spins, like one of those sort of magic tricks, it splits and multiplies into multiple wheels, intermeshing and unfurling from behind them, blurring wings. You saw this from a a, a distance earlier. Now it is in the middle of this stone circle, blazing at all of you. It is impossible to look at directly. It's too bright. Even the warm Oregon shades her eyes. Even as, Gwyn, you see her sneer. Gwyn, uh, for all intents and purposes, is sort of lining up the other side of the Morrigan from Branwen, ready to sort of charge into battle a la the old times. All right, lovies, it's me, Matt, your compare. I hope you enjoyed Act 4 of Vigil, Chief Exec. There will now be an interval of two weeks, during which you're very welcome to join us backstage. Next week, we'll be going backstage with a selection of bloopers and outtakes from the recording session of this production. Stay tuned for the credits and the epilogue. But before then, a couple of brief announcements. I've got a couple of stories coming out this month, so if you're interested in the sort of stories that I can tell without the randomness of dice and the structure of role-playing game rules, here are some chances. First off, I have a story in Of the Sword, a daily sword-based microfiction podcast releasing an episode every day throughout September, Each episode centres around a unique sword, and all the episodes are under 10 minutes long, so it's uh, very easy to keep up with, even though it's releasing every day. My story is called Driving the Point Home, and it will be out in the episode on the 19th of September. You can find Of The Sword at ofthesword.crd.co. I'm also writing a serialised story in the Foggy Outline newsletter, the September issue of which is out this Friday. I haven't planned the story out in advance, I'm making it up with every new instalment, so I can't say exactly where it's going, but what it's about is a person who's invisible, who might as well not even exist, until he's introduced to you, at which point you begin to register his existence. So if you've ever had an anxious thought about how difficult it is in the modern world to maintain your network and web of social connections, just imagine that if you let that web of connections lapse, you might functionally cease to exist. So the third instalment of that story is out in the Foggy Outline newsletter on the 8th of September, and you can sign up to get those instalments straight to your inbox on the second Friday of every month, 
at buttondown.email slash foggy outline. Finally, it's been a little while since I talked to you about the podcast Snyder's Return. A lot like us, Snyder's Return has an onstage portion and a backstage portion, though they don't call it that. The onstage portion being some role-playing game actual play, and the backstage portion being interviews with people from around the role-playing game scene. Adam from Snyder's Return has also been a friend to the show. He's interviewed me on Snyder's Return, and he also played in our Instagram Reels game of Unreal as a finance bro housemate in a strange Big Brother house earlier this year. Here's Adam to complete that rundown on Snyder's Return. Snyder's Return is a tabletop role-playing game interviews and actual play podcast. We interview content creators, Twitch streamers, and fellow podcasters, and we put out our own actual play using a variety of different systems. So come and join us, come and have a listen. You can find us on Twitter at Return Snyder. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or check out our website at www.snydersreturn.squarespace.com. Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Role Players is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on. Your Lordship, our premises have been compromised, my typing pool decimated, and my pipeline of new typists fatally disrupted by hooligans mortal, umbral, and divine. With our reduced resources, we simply cannot keep up with events back in England in the mortal realm. I'm unable to protect, to cloak, that is, to glamour, all that should be washed from mortal minds. Already things have begun slipping from my grasp. All right, all right, you got your windows smashed and now you want your place and all your slaves replaced. I hear you. What I'm not hearing is why this is my business or why it was ever Fairyland's business in the first place. Of course, your lordship. Clearly I'm not abreast of all recent events here, but I do understand It has been some centuries since last there rode a hunt worth the name. I understand the current master of the hunt is quite itching to ride out. And I was given to understand, by Lord Oberon himself, I must assure you, that my work is quite the boon to the hunt, allowing the outriders to pick prey that will not be missed, to ensure a pure uninterrupted chase, you see. Ha. Huh. The un, is it? Well, well, Miss Clarissa. Plaything of Oberon. Perhaps we can do business.